So hello everyone and welcome officially to the register on track session for the Faculty of Engineering, specifically for the Halifax campus. Um, I'm so excited to be here today. We've got a lot of great folks on the call that are going to help you get all ready for registration and excited for your first year at Dalhousie University. And uh, before we jump into the presentation, I just want to acknowledge that Dalhousie is on Mi'kma'ki, the unceded and ancestral territory of the Mi'kmaq. And whether you're coming from afar, whether you're coming from just down the road, it's always important to acknowledge and recognize the land that we're studying on, working on, and benefiting from. And also for the uh, communities of African Nova Scotian people who have been here for over 200 years and the legacies. And so you're coming to a city with rich culture and history, and we always like to start presentations by acknowledging that. And so, as I said before, my name is Tyler Hall. I'm a student success advisor and I use pronouns he, him. And I'm originally a Dalhousie alum. I did my Bachelor of Management um, and then I did my master's at Acadia. But I'm also a dancer and a baker. And so, as you get to know the different staff on campus, we're not just, you know, robots that help you with course registration. We're lots of great personalities and people. So get to know your staff, get to know your faculty, because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of great opportunities to connect there. And I work in the Bissett Student Success Center. And so we're going to be able to help engineering students in a multiple ways. Um, but throughout your whole degree, we're able to do these three things here. So career services is a really big service that we do. So if you're needing help writing a resume, creating a cover letter, you know, anything related to job preparation, job searching, or maybe you're not quite sure where to go with your career. We have a career counselor on campus as well that can help you out. So I highly recommend taking advantage of those. And engineering can be a pretty rigorous program. There's lots of math, physics, chemistry, all in your first year. And so you might need a little bit of help along the way with your study skills. And so we have a studying for success engineering specific coach that, um, that works with engineering students specifically. And uh, they do a lot of workshops on writing tests, how to manage your time, avoiding procrastination, all that great stuff. And so whether you're new to Dalhousie, new to university, maybe it's been a while since you've been in school, I always recommend going to those workshops just as a refresher, or maybe you'll learn something new. And we also have peer advising, which is a one-on-one -on -one service. And so, uh, yeah, definitely connect with peers because they're going through the same thing you are. And so it's one thing for me to tell you who graduated 10 years ago, but it's quite another for a student who's, who's in the program now. And so peer advising is another great thing. But also for course registration for first year engineering students, the Bissett Center is here as well. And so we're going to be opened on registration day. I'm going to give you more information about that a little bit later on. But we are here um, to help with course registration and make sure that it's a smooth, smooth process to get you ready for first year. But we also have advisors specifically in engineering that are going to support you beyond your first year or if you're a transfer student. And so the Bissett Center is great for people who are either direct from high school or haven't done university or college experience before. If you are a transfer student and have done some school, I recommend emailing, if you haven't already, engineering at dal.ca. The program worksheet for engineering is very specific. It's all laid out for you. But if you have transfer credits, that can change what your first year looks like. And so the engineering advisors at engineering at dal.ca are the best folks to help you out with that. There's also some engineering specific supports that I always like to point out. So um, the photo there in the bottom left corner, that is uh, Karen Hemsworth. And Karen works um, with student engagement. And so she's there to help you connect with specific engineering volunteer opportunities. Um, she also does an early alert program that kind of keeps an eye on you in your first couple semesters at Dal to make sure that if you are having some challenges, maybe you didn't um, succeed on a really important test, Karen's there to reach out to you and make sure you're connecting with those supports to make sure you have a good year and also student advocacy. So, you know, if you're having some challenges with your classes or in the university, Karen's a great person to check in with um, for all of those things. You also have your own student center. It's the Melda Murray Student Center, the MMSC, and uh, they have a lot of stuff. So they do study skills and career workshops, and we actually work with the Melda Murray Center. So all of those services that we have here, we do a lot of work on your campus as well. Technical workshops, health promotion events, and much more. And again, engineering at dal.ca, a very easy email to remember. And so I highly recommend um, connecting with the Melda Murray Center once you're on campus, because it's just going to give you a 
lot of those supports. And so this gives you a little bit of idea about who's on the call today, who's going to be chatting with you. Um, but we want to officially welcome you to Dalhousie University. And I just have a quick little message from my team. Welcome to and so these are some of the lovely people that you might meet in the Bissett Student Success Center. Jason's going to be on the call a little bit later, um, who uh, is one of the great advisors that works throughout the first and second year, especially with transfer students. And uh, Tim Little's going to come on too. So lots of fun stuff. Um, but we want to just welcome you to the university. And while you're getting ready to come to Dal, some things to think about, you know, what are you excited about? What brought you to Dalhousie? What are you excited about engineering? Maybe it's that first year design course where you actually get some hands-on learning opportunities, or maybe it's meeting new people or moving to a city. Feel free to put some of that stuff in the chat. We'd love to hear from you about what's, what's on your mind. It's also important to think of too, what are some challenges you're anticipating? Um, the more you know about yourself and what you need, the better prepared you are going to be um, for, uh, for your first year at university. And also, how do you plan to make the best out of your experience? Maybe that's connecting with Karen Hemsworth and doing some of those volunteer experiences, or maybe looking into some other extracurricular things like joining a sports team or, you know, joining the French club. There's lots of different options. And so we love students to explore those varied interests and, uh, and just have a really great first year experience. And not only are you coming to Dalhousie, but you're also coming to an amazing program, the Faculty of Engineering. And um, for that, I would like to bring Tim Little up um, just to chat a little bit about what are some of those really exciting opportunities. So Tim, over to you. Okay, okay, thank you very much. I apologize to all my uh, camera uh, stopped working uh, this morning, so I, I can't uh, sh show you my actual face. This is relatively close. Uh, uh, so welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, I am the Associate Dean of uh, the Faculty of Engineering, and uh, I, I, do, I do welcome you all. Uh, we're really, really excited to get back to in-person classes. Uh, we've had a, a rough couple of years and uh, a number of our uh, courses and offerings have been uh, online or partially online and we're moving back now to uh, full uh, uh, in-person uh, activities and we're excited to see you. We're excited to uh, interact with you and have you in our classes. It's super important that uh, when you come, uh, you're, you're, you're in class and you're learning and you're uh, uh, connecting with your peers and you're connecting with your instructors. Uh, that collaborative learning experience is uh, second to none. So we're happy to have that uh, back in place again. Uh, when you come and uh, be with us, uh, you will find some exciting things that are happening. Uh, this year for us is a particularly important year. It's, it's an accreditation year, and that's where the uh, Engineers Canada comes and reviews our program and uh, gives us the uh, permission uh, to graduate students uh, who are ready to be licensed as professional engineers in Canada. And so we're excited about that opportunity. Um, it, it also, because of that, is, is also a, a transition year where we're starting to, uh, a number of our programs have uh, made changes to their programs. Most of those changes uh, involve modernizing the program. Most of those changes involve adding uh, immersive hands-on activities. So we're really excited about seeing the, the number and type of hands-on uh, activities increase, uh, which includes builds, which includes labs, which includes projects, uh, all kinds of activities that you will actually be involved in, in going through the engineering design, figuring out what it should look like, and then making it look like that. So that, that's a really exciting thing for us. Uh, it's part of our strategic plan. It's part of what we want to uh, enhance in our program. And uh, we're looking forward to that. One of the other things that we're seeing uh, change in our curriculum are uh, much, mo much more flexibility. The engineering program is a relatively rigid program because of its accreditation, uh, but we're seeing many of our programs offer more electives. Uh, we're seeing many some of our programs offering 
different time sequences so that you can go through the program at your own pace. And so these are some of the things that uh, are happening uh, in the engineering program. And uh, as you work your way through that program, you'll start to see those things uh, 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 impact you and your studying and your program. So uh, super excited to uh, uh, be with you today. Super excited to see you. Uh, as September rolls around. Uh, thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you much. Thank you so much, Dr. Little. And yeah, we, we're just really excited. And um, Dalhousie has such an amazing engineering program. And so you are really made a good choice. And um, we can't wait for you to discover all that it has to offer. And so in addition to getting to know the engineering faculty, it's also important to know what it's like to be a student on campus. And um, luckily for you, we have Charlie here. Charlie is not an engineering student, but they've done a lot of really exciting stuff on campus. And so no matter what program you're in, um, Charlie has some great advice. So Charlie, over to you. Thank you, Tyler. Um, yeah, my name is Charlie. Uh, I am not an engineering student. I am currently completing my bachelor's in sociology with a minor in creative writing. And so I actually was a transfer student. I started um, my university career at Acadia. And at the end of my first year, I just realized I wanted to be in more of a city environment. So I transferred to Dalhousie. And one of the first things I did uh, was make an appointment with the Accessibility Center. So I have ADHD. In high school, I had an individual education plan, an IEP. Um, and so I brought them my IEP. And they were able to help me set up um, academic accommodations uh, through the school, uh, which was incredibly helpful. And then another thing that I did was the Stay on Track program uh, via the Bizet Center that I now work at. And it's just essentially uh, one of the services that we offer, um, you know, that you kind of meet with a, um, an advisor regularly and they help you, you know, stay accountable and stay on track, um, hence the name. Uh, and that was definitely like an inspiration for wanting to work here a few years later. And another thing that I did um, in my first few years here was volunteer at South House. And so South House is the campus's uh, gender and sexuality um, resource center. And so I volunteered with them. I helped them plan a few events and I cleaned up their library, which was really fun and interesting. Um, and so last year I got a job at the Dalhousie uh, Registrar's Office as a student clerk. Um, and yeah, it was really interesting as a student to see kind of the behind the scenes of how uh, like a lot of these systems work. Um, and the registrar's office job definitely paved the way to finding this um, peer advisor position this year, which I've really been enjoying. Um, so yeah, that's some of my involvement in the school here. And then I was gonna talk about my favorite course um, as this writing course, but since you all are engineering students, I actually wanted to bring up this program that is through King's College. And so as Dal students, you can take King's courses. Uh, the King's campus is technically on the Dal campus. It's right at the corner um, of Oxford and Coburg, um, basically on the Dal campus. And so uh, they have this program called the History of Science and Technology. And it is kind of a hist well, history, social science uh, type course. Um, and they have all sorts of interesting courses that, um, you know, bring different students from different faculties together. So there's like science and engineering students, there's like social science and humanities students. And yeah, I just find like, it's really interesting context if you're interested in the history of technology. Um, I'd highly recommend those courses at King's. Um, and my advice for incoming students is just to take advantage of the supports that are available through the school. They're for you. You know, sometimes I've thought about like, uh, you know, going into the school that like, oh, these, you know, these student supports are so busy, like this is an emergency, this isn't an emergency, like I should just wait until this is a bigger deal. And no, it's, it's best to connect with those, um, you know, student supports before it's an emergency. Um, and, you know, make those connections, because uh, they can, you know, like, even if you're not having issues, they can really lead towards like potentially jobs at the school or, you know, connections, academic connections in the future. So yeah, that's my advice there. I'll hand it back to Tyler now and I'll be back for student supports later on in the presentation. Thank you so much, Charlie. Um, really great advice. And yeah, like these supports are here. 
not only at the university, but through engineering. And so hopefully you've got a little bit of a hint that you've got a lot of people who are looking out for you as you transition to Dell. So yeah, now we're going to get into the reason you probably signed up for the webinar is to figure out how to register for courses. And so there's a couple things you need to do before you even get started. And the first thing is write down this website, dal.ca slash registration. All the information that we're going to talk about today is all in here. Um, I'm going to show you how to use the website a little bit later on, but we've got kind of a four-step process. And for engineering students, step three is really done for you, um, where you create your schedule. Uh, for the videos on the right-hand side, um, there's a video explaining every step. So if you don't want to go back and watch this whole webinar again, those are like three to four minute videos that are going to go over all of those steps. And so hopefully this website is a really good resource for you as you're getting ready to pick your classes. And so before you can even pick your classes, there's a couple things you need to do. And the first is you have to become a student and you do that by paying your $200 admissions deposit. If you have not paid this deposit, you will not be allowed to register. And it does take about 48 hours to go through. So make sure you've done that. I'm gonna say this a lot, but you need to activate your net ID and password. That's actually how you log into the site where you're going to be registering. Also highly recommend setting up your Dalhousie email. Um, this email is going to be the main way that we communicate with students. And so if you don't check it regularly, you can actually get it forwarded to an email you do check. But um, I highly recommend if you're not logging into your Dalhousie email, you know, at least twice a week over the summer, but when you're a student, I would say every single day. Dal.ca slash dates is a really handy website. That's gonna tell you all those important dates, when the first day of school is, when is move-in day, when is reading week, when's the last day to add or drop courses. Great things to know. We also have a new student checklist. And so registering for classes is right high on the list. Um, so definitely following that checklist as you go through the summer is a really handy thing to do. So I'm gonna talk a little bit specifically about the net ID because we get a lot of questions. Not everyone knows what it is, um, but how you actually find it is by going to password.dal.ca and click activate your net ID. This is how you're gonna log into a number of resources on campus, um, but specifically DAL online, which is where you register. And it's generally the first two letters of your name minus vowels and then a bunch of letters, or sorry, numbers. Um, so there's an example there, ch123456. At dal.ca would be your email address as well. And so it, it does a lot of duty. Now your net ID is different than your student ID, which is your B00 number. Some people call it a banner number or a boo number, but this is your student ID. And this is how we as staff and faculty access your files. And so if you come to an academic advising appointment, we'll say, okay, what's your B00 number? That allows me to log into your record and see what courses you've already done. For you to log into things, you use your net ID. And so you need to remember both of these numbers. I highly recommend either writing them down, putting them in your phone. You will eventually memorize them because we're going to ask them for you a hundred times. Um, but net ID and banner number or student ID, two different things, but both very important. And so now you need to find your courses, you know, which courses do you actually need to take as a first year engineering student and um, luckily we have a first year engineering program sheet, but I'm going to show you how to actually get there. And so let's just say you're on the Internet, you're going to go to dal.ca, uh, oopsies, dal.ca slash registration, that website I talked about. And so step one, theoretically, we've completed everything. You've paid your deposit, activated your ID, all that great stuff. Step two is find your courses. And in your first year, you can find the courses you need to take using our course planning worksheets. I'm gonna click on that and they're all organized by faculty. So you all are in the faculty of engineering. And um, there are three different things that we're gonna be talking about. The first is the first year courses. So if we open this PDF, it explains a lot about how engineering um, registration works, but most importantly, it shows your um, fall schedule and your winter schedule. 
For engineering, it is a very specific first year, so you actually don't have any choice of what classes you take, but you have a little choice in terms of when they are. It also does give our email, which is advising at dal.ca. And like I said, our office is here to help you with that first year um, course registration piece. There's also the engineering email as well, which is really handy for more complicated questions or transfer students. And so this sheet is gonna kind of outline what your first year is going to look like. Now, sometimes students might be looking at this and, and think like, oh, that's a lot of classes. I'm not sure if I can handle this. It is designed in a very specific way. And Jason's gonna talk about that um, in a second. But if you do have questions about the amount of classes or if you're worried about this being you know, too much work for your first year, definitely connect with engineering at dal.ca because there are a few alternate options, um, but it's just really important to, to kind of understand what those are and how that works. Um, but I am going to pass uh, Jason back on um, to talk a little bit about um, just the engineering structure, why it works, why this first year schedule, and, um, and a little bit more information. So Jason, over to you. Hello, everyone. My name is Jason LaCour. I'm the undergraduate coordinator for the Faculty of Engineering. Welcome all of you who've come today to this program. I only have a few minutes. I have about a million things I would love to tell you and bore you to death with details that I feel you need to know. Um, but you'll be exposed to a lot of those once you start and I'll be emailing you usually once or twice a semester. And I would ask that you just make sure to read those emails. They're going to be terrifying. They're going to be 10 pages long, but bowl through them. Uh, and uh, make sure to pay attention. One of the things that I wanted to talk to you today about very briefly was that when you start your engineering program in year one, you're what's called a general engineering student. You're in the Bachelor of Engineering. No specific type of engineering has been determined yet. The process by which one gets one specific discipline, so chemical engineering, civil engineering, industrial engineering, et cetera, we're going to talk about on the next slide, but first here on this slide, I just wanted to give you a glance at the overall first two years of the program. Because the engineering program really is broken down into two parts. There are the first two years of the program that you'll hear called the diploma program. You'll hear it called the engineering core program. And your work is basically you need to complete all first and second year courses before you can be admitted to your specific discipline where you will do years three and four, or if you choose to do co-op, years three, four, and five. There are very, very few electives in the engineering program. The course option with the greatest choice is a writing requirement elective in year two. Uh, pretty much every other course that you're going to take, however, is going to be specific. You'll have a bit more choice in the upper division because you'll have a range of uh, technical electives that you do once you start your year three program. But the good news for engineering is you basically know what you need to take. The bad news for engineering is you, you, you know what you need to take. There isn't a lot of flexibility and, and choice in the program. So this particular sheet, which lists all the requirements for all the specific disciplines to complete the first two years of the program, you can find at go.engineering.dal.ca slash diploma. And assuming that this PowerPoint is going to be shared with you later, you can just click that link on the PowerPoint. Tyler, if I could get you to advance the slide. So as I said, when you come to engineering, you're, you're right now, you're an engineering student. Your future is wide open as to what type of engineer you want to be. We offer six specific disciplines in engineering. Those are chemical engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, environmental engineering, industrial engineering, and mechanical engineering. During your first year, you're gonna have some classes in technical communications that will cover some of what these disciplines have to offer and what they are like. And we'll also have an open house where we kind of showcase these various disciplines to help first year students make their choice as to what um, program it is that they want to go into in third year. You will be telling us in this coming year what type of engineer you want to be. So you will be asking you to apply for your placement by the end of your first year. So this is one of those things I'd really like you all to remember is sometime during this year between October and April 30th, you must apply for discipline placement. Yep, go ahead to the next slide, Tyler, please. 
This is a, a just a little handout I put together of things I think that are really, really, really important for you to know. You must have a placement to be eligible to be admitted to a year three program. So it's vital that you do not forget, and you will get a lot of emails about this throughout the year. It'll be mentioned on a couple of bright spaces of your first year classes. You'll get reminders from the Melda Murray Student Center. But it's absolutely important that you do apply for placement by April 30th of 2023. So most students apply for placement during the winter 2023 20, semester, and you're applying for a fall 2024 placement in a specific program. Discipline choice is competitive. If you have a GPA above three and a half, go at the end of your first year, you'll get the discipline of your choice. After that, we allot them out ranked on GPA until the various programs are full. When you're planning your courses, it is really important to understand that you must complete all year one and two courses before you can be admitted to your year three. It's kind of important to think of this as two separate programs. You have your year one and two program, then when you satisfy the requirements for that year one and two program and you have a placement, then you can advance into year three. So let's say it's August 2024 and you're missing two courses from years one and two. You won't be put into year three if you're missing any courses. Um, so it's important to schedule your courses accordingly. The simplest way to do this, just follow the registration instructions. Um, that we, we lay out in terms of the full course load for the engineering program, but obviously a lot of students like to do things in a slightly different pattern. We can always accommodate those patterns for the most part, but it's important to talk to an advisor uh, if you're going to pursue that. Second requirement of going into year three is that you have to complete all your courses in years one and two, and you need to do it with a cumulative engineering GPA of 2.0 or higher. Uh, for those not familiar with GPA scales, a 2.0 is a C. So you need to have a C average in your first two years of the program to qualify for advancement to year three. University is a very different place than high school. My understanding is that most of you are universe, uh, high school students who, for whom next year will be your first year of university. There's a tremendous world of difference between the two experiences. When you join university, one of the most important things for you as an individual to help you be as successful as you can possibly be will be your time management, planning, and organizational skills. You are fundamentally responsible and accountable for making sure that you know when assignments are due, you know what the assignment is about, you know when your tests are, you know when your final exams are, and that you are kind of actively engaged with organizing that work. Because it's quite possible that no instructor is ever going to remind you that something's due on a specific day. They'll have told you that at the first of the term in the course syllabus. So my recommendation would be when you get access to your bright space, course syllabus is posted, that you make sure you have a way of organizing all those informations, all those dates, all the days you're supposed to be in lab, all the times that an assignment is due or a project is due is or a test is held. Make sure you have some kind of organizational system in place so that you don't miss anything because your coursework is going to keep you tremendously busy as it is. And if you're disorganized when it comes to how you're organizing your studies and your life, you're, there's a possibility you may find it overwhelming. Related to that, if you ever get to that point where you are overwhelmed and you get that kind of queasy sick feeling in your stomach about your studies and you're not sure what to do and you are worried and worried and worried, the worst thing you can do is just sit there with that feeling doing nothing, you should talk to someone, whether it's myself, uh, you can email me directly, you can email advising at dal.ca, you can email Karen Hemsworth. There's lots of people that you can reach out to. So if you think you're in trouble, talk to somebody. If you feel overwhelmed, talk to somebody. Um, and just make sure that you don't kind of just ignore that feeling or retreat from it. Because it's important that um, if you do find yourself getting overwhelmed, that you talk to someone about it as early as possible so that we can help you plan your schedule accordingly to give you the workload that you're capable of at that time. So thank you, Tyler. Those are the things I most wanted them to know. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jason. And I can't highlight enough what Jason said. We are here to support you. And so never feel like you're in this alone. Um, between Jason, Karen, my team, the Melda Murray Center, Tim, 
you've got a lot of people on your side and we're just so excited for you to come. And although university can be a little, you know, there's definitely some anxiety around it. Just know that the supports are here to make sure you succeed. And so um, the other thing I wanted to point out on the, uh, on the engineering website is the engineering block. So when you're looking at find your courses, there's these two other PDFs and with engineering, your schedules are pre-made for you. And so if we look at the engineering fall registration block, we've got group eight, group one, group two, group three, and all you need to do is choose a group. And so they have slight variations, you know, for instance, this one, you have a little break here, Whereas this one, you would have class, but then you have a break here. And so when you're looking at which block works best for you, just think about how do you want your day laid out, right? And they're, they're all right here. Now, Jason did mention, if you're thinking about a reduced course load, definitely get in touch with an advisor. But on registration day, still register for a block as normal, and then we can work with you and take courses away as needed. And so um, I always uh, I always encourage that students do the, um, the block registration, no matter what path you end up on, and we can always make changes because registration opens on June 11th, but you have until the second week of September to finalize your schedule. And so register for a block on the Saturday, and then after that, meet with an advisor and we can always make adjustments after. But these are the fall blocks, choose one. And then for winter, you can choose another one and they don't have to be the same block. So you don't have to do block or group. We call them blocks. It says group on the schedule, block and group are the same word. Um, but if you choose block one for the fall, you can choose block eight for the winter. It, it's whatever works best for your schedule. And so it's just one thing to think about while you're, while you're finding your courses. And so now we're actually going to show you um, how to choose your schedule. And so when you're looking at these blocks, you know, what time of day do you learn best? Do you want your classes back to back? Or is there a schedule that might have a few more breaks in it? Do you need time for lunch or dinner? What does that look like? Um, do you have access to quiet time at different times? And um, the actually this one I can take off. I This is a copy from another one. That last point, did I record CRNs for lectures, labs, and tutorials? You can pretend that that is not there. You don't need to record those because the great folks in engineering have done that for you. So just ignore that last line. But it is important to know what those words mean, lecture, lab, tutorial, because you're going to see these um, in your schedule. And so your lectures are your largest sections of the class. So they're professor led, um, they're more like taking notes, presentation style, and it's usually the largest section of your class. But then as part of that same class, so let's say you're taking chemistry, you're gonna have your chemistry lecture, which will be in a larger lecture hall, but then your, your chemistry class is gonna be broken up into smaller labs of generally only 30 people. And those labs are gonna be the more hands-on learning. And they're generally run by a lab coordinator or a teacher assistant. And then there's also tutorials. So for instance, physics has a lecture, a lab and a tutorial. And those tutorials are there sometimes for extra help. Sometimes they're more discussion based. In your first day of class, your professor is going to outline what all of these mean, but you might be looking at your schedule and be like, why do I have physics four times on my schedule? Well, you might have it for your lectures, your labs and tutorials. And so those are what those words mean um, as you're looking at your schedule um, going forwards. And so now that you've kind of thought about those things and you're, you're looking at moving forwards, we're gonna talk about block registration. And so block registration is what you folks are going to do because the blocks are already built for you, all you need to do is sign up for a block. And so it provides conflict-free schedules. You don't need to choose anything. All lectures, tutorials, labs automatically fit together. And there's eight blocks to choose from, same courses, different schedules, and then one block for fall, one for winter, and again, dal.ca slash registration. And it just makes it easier for you to meet people, right? You can find study groups because you're gonna be in the same lectures, labs, and tutorials. So it builds in that community right away. And so we had a look at what those blocks looked like. Um, here they are again. Um, and once you've chosen your blocks, you're ready for registration day on June 11th. And so before you register, you again have needed to activate your NetID 
and your password, because if you can't log in, you won't be able to register. And you need to check your registration status. And you can do that today. Um, and so how you do that is you're going to log into Dal Online. This is what you're going to do on registration day as well. But dalonline.dal.ca, you're going to use your net ID and your password. You're going to click on Web for Students, Registration, Prepare for Registration, and it's going to open up the registration software. You'll hit Prepare for Registration again, and you'll choose 2022-2023 Fall, and it should look like this. Your student status should permit registration, your academic standing should be good, no holds, and your time ticket should say June 11th at 12 p.m., and that's 12 p.m. Atlantic time. Don't check your winter term. Um, your winter term gets activated once you register for fall courses. And so if you check your registration status for winter, it's going to look scary. So just check your fall. And if your fall looks like this, that means you're good to go. And then on registration day, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to log into Dell Online, Web for Students, registration. But this time, you're going to hit register for classes. And again, this is on June 11th at 12 noon Atlantic time. You're going to hit register for classes again. You're going to choose your fall term. And then right at the top, you're going to see this find classes thing. Just ignore that. What you're going to do is you're going to hit blocks. And it's going to show you all the blocks. So this is group one. If you scroll down, you would see group two, three, all the way to five. Choose which one fits for you. Hit submit. And you're registered. And so you'll see your schedule in a picture. And everything should be green and registered. Now, depending on when you register, sometimes blocks can fill. And so I always recommend having a second block in mind just in case the first one fills. And so sometimes when you register for a block, it'll put you in some classes and not in others. What I recommend is just where it says action none, change it to drop, drop all your classes, hit submit, clear your schedule, go back to block registration and choose a new block. Um, some can be more popular than others, um, but just, yeah, have a couple blocks in mind just as a backup. And then make sure you do your winter block as well. And so you'll hit select term at the top of the page, choose 2022, 2023 winter, and then choose your winter block as well. And then on registration day, we're going to be around, but also on every single page, there's a help button and there's really great videos. So there's videos on preparing for registration, registering for courses manually, but there's also one on block registration too. And so don't hesitate to have a look at those, um, at those videos for extra support. I am going to talk a lot about next steps, what to do on June 11th if things go awry. Um, but before I do that, um, we just want to talk about even more support. So we've talked a lot about what engineering offers and what our office offers, but there's a lot of other folks on campus that can help you out your first year. And I'm going to invite Charlie to come back and they're gonna tell you about some of the other uh, supports on campus. So Charlie, over to you, friend. All right. Uh, yeah, so the first support that we're talking about is financial services. This is an office here on campus that helps students with financial matters. Uh, so, uh, you know, looking for having questions about uh, scholarship and bursaries, um, even emergency temporary loans, um, and even like, you know, budgeting for university and things like that. Um, it's a really great resource. I will say um, any payment to the school, so like your tuition or any academic fees, that goes through the registrar's office. This is more on the student side, helping students with financial matters. Um, yeah, we can go to the next slide. Uh, so I mentioned the Student Accessibility Center earlier. Um, they help students with any kind of, um, you know, uh, accessibility barriers on campus. Um, so you can, you know, set up an appointment with them and they can uh, assist you in, um, you know, exam accommodations, assistive technology, uh, you know, accessing disability related funding. And essentially like you don't need to have all of the documentation um, about any, you know, disability or something that, um, you know, if you're in the process of getting diagnosed or something, you can come to them and uh, talk to them and they should still be able to help you uh, get some accommodations for, uh, for um, you know, academic matters and even like physical barriers on campus. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the International Center is another great resource. It is for students who um, are coming to Dalhousie from outside of Canada. Um, 
And so they have like a physical center and they have like, you know, a study space and a kitchen and stuff, but they also have um, advisors specifically trained to help students with uh, the visa process and filing Canadian taxes. Uh, they also handle um, the Hazia's exchange and study abroad uh, programs, as well as uh, English as another language supports. And they also just do, um, you know, cultural events sometimes. So they'll have like food events or different, you know, highlighting different cultures. So if you're just curious about like, you know, just the different um, cultures uh, represented on campus, um, I'd definitely check out some of their events. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so Black Student Advising um, is for, um, you know, students at the school looking for advising, advocacy, and mentorship, and getting connected with other Black students uh, on campus. Um, they have a physical location. It's like a, a little house here on campus. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, yeah, it, it's in the same building as the Indigenous uh, Advising Center. Um, here they have, you know, Indigenous advisors and elders that Indigenous students can connect with um, and different, you know, cultural activities, um, spaces for smudging and things like that. Um, and uh, sometimes they'll do events for, you know, the general Dow community to learn more about different Indigenous cultures. Um, so those, the Black uh, Advising Center and Indigenous Center are in the same building. Uh, next slide, please. And so similarly, uh, this is a new role we're uh, hiring for this summer, which is why we don't have their email address yet, but it's similar to the Black and Indigenous advising positions, um, you know, for, for best LGBTQ students uh, uh, looking for, you know, mentorship and advising uh, and looking to connect with uh, community on campus. And next slide, please. Um, so the Dow Bookstore is where you would find a lot of your textbooks. Um, you know, you'll get a list and you'll be able to go find your textbooks there. They also have, you know, any Dow merch type stuff and um, some, you know, dorm and like living essentials as well. Uh, next slide, please. And finally, yeah, we have the uh, Dalhousie Health and Wellness Center. It is our on-campus um, health clinic. Uh, so all students are um, through tuition covered under the Dow Health Plan. Um, you can opt out of it if you already have coverage or just don't, you know, want to for whatever reason, but you're automatically opted in, which means you can access these services. They have doctors, nurses, mental health counselors, social workers, and so, yeah, anything a general like medical clinic does, you can go there um, through them. So I think that's the last slide in terms of support, so I'll hand it back to you. Thanks so much, Charlie. Um, so yeah, even more people on campus that are here to help you. And all of these things can be found not only in this PowerPoint, and I, I should have mentioned, Jason mentioned, hopefully it will be sent out. It will be sent out. So those links that Jason provided are 100% clickable, um, but also at dal.ca. So if you go to our main website, there's a button here that I don't think a lot of people realize exists. It says current students, and it is a list of every single support we offer. So things from the dental clinic, food services, human rights and equity, IT services, LGBTQSI+, um, lots of stuff here to help students. And so I highly recommend you remember that this current student button exists or connect with us, connect with the Melda Murray Center, just connect with someone and we'll make sure we get, uh, we get you to the right place. And so um, now we're just going to talk a little bit about some things you can do to prepare for the, uh, the new year. And so Dal Mobile is an app that we have created that you can download through the App Store or Google Play Store. And it's just a way to connect with folks, meet your classmates, ask questions, connect to campus, um, and just have that on your phone and, um, and really have it easily accessible. A good thing about it too is it'll give you alerts. So if there's a snow day and you don't need to come to class, easy peasy, uh, just sends it right to your phone. So Dell Mobile, I highly recommend downloading. Also feel free to connect with us. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter as well. And so we're a great resource for your first year and happy to help you out through your journey. And also there's a program that um, the university runs called Together at Dow. There's gonna be more information being sent to your email over the summer, but it's a program that runs for your first year. And it's a way for you to meet people and get some mentorship opportunities. There's ways to get involved, explore possibilities, develop your skills, and just really have a group of folks that you're going through everything together. And they split students into smaller groups and match them with a mentor. And so the Together at Val program is just a really great way to be engaged with the community um, right away. So 
Important dates and reminders. Registration opens June 11th at 12 p.m. And this is a Saturday, but we will be open. So our office is here to help you on registration day. If you do run into any questions or problems, you're welcome to give us a call and we'll try our best to help you out. Um, we're going to be open from 1130 to 4 Atlantic time and our phone number and email is there. Um, we're not going to be answering our email on that day. Um, we're just going to be focusing on the phone. So if you respond to the email, you'll get a link to our phone. Um, but uh, yes, definitely do that. Also, deposit payments, again, they take 48 hours to process, and that's 48 business hours. So you want to make sure that you're not doing it on Thursday night because it won't necessarily be done by the Saturday. So I recommend just doing it now. If you know you're coming to Dow and you wanna register for courses, pay that $200 and that ensures that on registration day, you won't have any holds on your account. And again, activate your net ID and your password. And so the registrar's office is also going to be opened. Um, so our center is great with like general questions and course selections, but if you're getting a lot of like registration errors, the folks in the registrar's office have the power to go in the back end and look at what those errors might be. And so they're a really great resource also. And they're going to be open on June 11th, um, 1130 AM as well. They've got their phone number there. Same with the email. It's not the fastest way to get a response on registration day. Phone is the fastest. And both our offices are going to be quite busy, especially from 12 to 1. And so if you don't get through right away, don't panic. Registration just opens on that day. We've got all summer. And because engineering is such a specific program, you will need to be in those courses and we'll find a way to make that happen, even if there's error messages. And so don't stress out too much. Um, and the registrar's office, Charlie mentioned a little bit, there's a bunch of offices in it. So admissions, awards and financial aids, transfer credits. And so it's a great office and you'll be working with them throughout your degree as well. So it's good to know what they do and who they are. And um, that dal.ca slash new students website is a great one to bookmark, checklist, helpful tips, um, orientation, family and friends, virtual tour, highly recommend uh, doing that. And we're all here for you. Um, if nothing that you got out of this presentation, besides there's a lot to know, is that you don't need to know it all right now. You just need to know who to contact. And so advising at dal.ca, engineering at dal.ca, we'll get you to the right place. And so just reach out if you need anything. Um, we're going to do a little Q&A session now because we've got some time left before the session ends. But we'd love to know if this presentation was helpful, if you're getting excited and ready to come to Dal in the fall. So Charlie's just going to pop a link for a survey in the chat. Um, we're going to be drawing $50 uh, gift cards for the bookstore. It takes 30 seconds to fill out. And so, um, yeah, we just really appreciate knowing that. So um, just look for that link. Charlie's going to post it in the chat. And I'd love to have Tracy and Jason um, come back. And we're going to do some live questions. So Tracy, what are some of the, uh, the burning questions that folks have been asking? Thanks, Tyler. I just will say that uh, the chat or the Q&A was a little bit quiet. So I think it must uh, reflect how good your presentation was, how thorough you were. Um, I think with engineering, because of the block registration, it, it makes it a lot easier. There's, there's virtually... Um, no, no choices that students have to make, um, so it's easier. Uh, there were some questions, though. Um, one you mentioned, but just to maybe reiterate, students asked, do we register for both fall and winter classes um, or blocks on June 11th? Can you clarify? Yes, 100%. And oh, there's a kitty. Oh, so cute. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm very easily distracted by pets. <laughs> every meeting, every Amazing. meeting. Um, well, I'm glad they grace us with their presence. But yes, uh, fall and winter. So make sure you register for your fall block first, hit select term, change it to winter, and then do your winter block second. Great question, though. Always good to reiterate. Um, someone was asking about study abroad opportunities. Is that possible in engineering? So technically, yes. Practically, there are some considerable obstacles. Um, for doing engineering program courses on study abroad. Uh, universities where you could do it at are, are very limited simply due to the accreditation requirements. The school has to be covered by the Washington Accord uh, and accredited by one of the member nations. It is possible, and I'm willing to help 
uh, any students who really, really, really want to try to make it work, but it can be very difficult. I would say of the engineering students I know who did a term of study abroad, it's really for personal development and growth, not for courses for their engineering program. So would it be possible to do a co-op work term abroad? Yes, you can work anywhere in the world. Uh, it just has to be under a recognized professional engineer. Okay, so that might be a good alternative to if a student really does want to travel and, and yep. get that experience away. Um, another question um, is what if, um, what if things, you know, what if students realize that maybe this isn't the right program for them and not suggesting that, of course, engineers are, are um, if you're here to hear about the engineering program, hopefully that is your, your choice, but sometimes it does happen. What, what would be the process if a student realized, wow, I really should be in science or computer science? Is that possible once you've started an engineering program? Uh, yes, um, my recommendation is that if you do get to that point, where you're starting to think engineering is not the program that you want. Number one, talk to talk to someone first. Um, but secondly, make sure not to give up on your classes. Your GPA is a currency in the university system. And you, even if you decide, you know what, after this fall term, I'm never thinking about engineering again. I hate it. Pass your courses, get decent grades. That will let you have the opportunity to transfer to a different program and be welcomed with open arms. If you fail all of your fall courses, you probably won't really have that opportunity. And in fact, you'll probably be looking at some kind of academic standing issues coming up while you're in the Faculty of Engineering. So my recommendation would either be make sure you just number one, protect yourself. If you are going to make that decision, either commit to finishing off those classes to the best of your abilities. If you are overwhelmed and there's no way you're going to finish those classes successfully as early as possible, talk to an advisor and discuss things like a retroactive withdrawal from the term or getting W grades or just dropping the courses. The number one thing you wanna do is make sure you don't kind of damage your academic record because by preserving your academic record, all the options in the world are open to you. But if you're trying to bring a new department a whole boatload of F grades, it can be considerably more challenging. Thank you, Jason. Um, another question here is just where do I find the blocks so that's a pretty fundamental yeah. important one so maybe we'll go back Tyler can you just remind us where to find the blocks you betcha dal.ca slash registration the only website you need and so you can access them right on the link here but it's part of step two find your courses we're going to go to course planning worksheets and then they're organized by faculty so just faculty of engineering We've got the general worksheet here, and then the fall blocks are here, and the winter blocks are there. And then on registration, you'll see the list of blocks. Let me just find that slide. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, so on registration day, when you log into the registration software, you're, oh, oh gosh, that's not it. Go back. Um, you're going to click on the blocks button. So this is the registration screen. So on registration day, click blocks, and then there'll be a list. Like if you were to scroll down, you'd see them all there. Um, so you just choose which block you want, hit submit, and you're good to go. Um, here's a question about computers. Uh, what kind of computer you might need in the engineering program and software is is that something that you commonly get, Jason? Yeah, in general, you want a, so there's, there's a bit of controversy in this question, of course, in that, what should you get? Um, we back basically recommend an IBM PC type uh, processor, uh, i5 or later, get an SSD drive, eight gigs RAM or higher. You can do most things with a Mac, you can but you'll probably want to make sure that you can run a DOS or a Windows emulator of some kind because there will be some specific software you'll run into in your first year that can't run on Macs. That said, if you do have a Mac and you don't can't do that because a lot of the new Macs can't, uh, then just use the computer labs. There's a, going to be a computer lab on the Studley campus that's really only used by engineering students, uh, 301B, and uh, there's another one right next door, done 301A. Those are quite often uh, available. And there's a whole lot of other computers available on the main campus as well. 
in general, good modern processor, SSD hard drive, eight gigs of RAM or higher. That would be my recommendation. Thank you. Um, there is a question about software engineering and how that um, intersects with our engineering program. Do, do we offer that? And if so, where is it? You will get uh, licenses for the necessary software in engineering. So when you need Silverlight in your Design One class, you'll be given up, be given that software. Okay. I think actually, just to clarify, I think there's a student who wants to major in software engineering. Talk so we do. We like. Yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Little. Yeah. So, uh, so software. Uh, th there's a spectrum that goes from computer science through software engineering through computer engineering through electrical engineering. Uh, the program at Dalhousie has a computer uh, engineering option and an electrical engineering option. So we don't have software. So, so the program in electrical engineering has lots of programming in it, but it's a computer engineering program, not a software engineering. Software is the design of software systems. Computer engineering is the design of computer systems. They're very close to each other. There's a lot of overlap but it's not a software engineering program. Maybe one more question, Tracy, to bring us to 12 o'clock. Yeah, for sure. Um, maybe just um, for you, Tyler, or uh, whoever feels best equipped, um, maybe just talk about the duration of a degree. Like how long is this going to take to, to finish? You know, if, uh, if I start in September, when will I graduate? Yeah, so assuming you're following the, the guidelines that we've provided um, and not doing the co-op program, it would be four years. So you would do those two years that Jason sort of outlined, which are the general years, and then you would do two years in your discipline after that. And that's assuming you pass all your courses and you follow the, the kind of structured guideline. But like Jason mentioned, you know, life happens and so that's why we're here and so if you find you're not able to take the full course load or you you might not pass a course come see an advisor and we'll work with you to either maybe suggest summer courses to get you back on a four-year track or maybe that means adding an extra year to your degree but jason did you want to briefly talk about what the co-op schedule looks like if they do co-op so sure, uh, with co-op, it's not something you actively participate in until you are admitted to your year three program. And all of them kind of look quite different in terms of how they're scheduled, but in fundamentally they're all the same. In that during your, uh, you're gonna have either four or five study terms depending on your program. And you're gonna have three up to four if you want to, that fourth one would be optional, co-op work terms. So just to kind of give you an example, what a co-op program might look like is say, if we take um, mechanical engineering, for example, fall term of year three. So the first time you're a mechanical engineering student, you're on a co-op work term, you come back, you do a study term, then you're off in the summer again for another work term and you come back to the fall and you're doing another study term. And they basically alternate like that. Um, some like civil and environmental engineering actually do something quite different. They go study term in the fall, study term in the winter, go away for a year and work, come back after that year, do a fall term, do a winter term, graduate. The thing to remember right now when you're planning, whether it's for visa purposes or just so you know how many years you've got ahead of you, um, it would be four years non-co-op, five years co-op. Perfect, thanks Jason, that's awesome. Well, that brings us to the end. And I think we actually cleared out the Q&A. So perfect timing all around. I want to give a big thank you to Tracy, Jason, Charlie, and Tim for helping facilitate all the stuff in the background and for presenting. Um, it's so appreciated. Hope you're getting excited. The chat's in, or the, the chat's in the survey. The survey is in the chat. And I will be sending this recording. Jason, uh, the engineering email, the advising email, all the open hours for registration, lots of important stuff, hopefully by the end of the day, assuming Zoom and YouTube cooperate. So uh, we look forward to seeing you in September and please stay in touch and have a lovely day, everyone. Take care now. Bye.